But like all good things, Jay Baker also manages to mess up. And I mean it. He manages to mess up. After writing all of this good stuff, then we come to the second or the first chapter and everything goes downhill. <laughs> and I'm going to show you why. If you want me to edit your writing uh, professionally, you can hire me to do that. If you want you know, a sample of your writing featured in the channel, you can just send me a sample in my Gmail. It's totally free. Today, we have a story submitted by one of the viewers here, Jay Baker, and fantastic guy, author of two self-published books. And this is one of his books, The Alchemist Air, okay, by Jay Baker. Now, here's something I'm going to tell you the following. Before we get to as to how he, man he messes up uh, and where the problems with this story lie, First, we have to talk about something that I have to really congratulate Jay Baker on. And it is an effective premise and promise display. So most people have no clue. And I mean it. Many people have submitted to me many different samples. And I have to tell you the truth. Many of them cannot even seem to write the first few paragraphs effectively. And this is for a failure to recognize what is a premise and what is a promise, okay? Fundamentally, how to set up a plot? Because we have to ask the question, how do we actually set up a plot? How do you do that? How could you possibly do that, which is to establish a plot? And so in this particular story right here, she was dying. So the first important thing that you need to do when setting up a plot is you need to introduce us to the premise of the story. And of course, the premise, the premise of this story is that there is an alchemist guy who has knowledge of fundamentally very old chemistry, right? That modern chemists would go on their knees for the answer to everlasting knowledge and life, okay? And so we have this protagonist in, and he has a loved one, and we start with, she was dying. Fantastic hook so far. This is the premise that has to be established. In other words, the premise is basically the concept that you have for your story. What is the concept you have for your story? For example, in, 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 in you know, you take a look at uh, Mistborn, for example, Brandon Sanderson, the premise that he has is it is a magical fantasy heist to overthrow this, you know, this dark lord, right? And so this lord ruler. So fundamentally, the story in the first prologue, now I'm not going to show you that because I'll have to open up the book and everything, but the first prologue that we see is basically the scar being enslaved and the necessity to overthrow the Lord Ruler, yes, which is he, his rule is an oppressive, authoritarian, monstrous, brutal subjugation of the scar. And so the scar will have to fight. And when we are introduced to, of course, Vim, in Mistborn, when we introduce to Vim, the promise comes in. The promise is that this girl, who is basically this little nobody, Scar, will be the key to liberate the Scar people, right? And here is fundamentally the premise or that that is that, that this story revolves around. This guy tries, to, you know, his, his loved one is dying. She was dying. Prime eyes to his hazel reflected the gleam of the firelight as her spirit he clutched her hands that clawed desperately to hold on to the warmth, feeling his body against hers. Her lungs closed, cutting off the oxygen to keep her blood, her heart pumping. He watched her pain. His body felt pinpricks that stung his flesh as the weight of helplessness enveloped him. And of course, he tries to help her by calling on this magical incantation. He was losing her. He closed his eyes and spoke, reciting every spell, every incantation. I call upon the spirits of earth, water, fire, and air. Allow thy energy to save what is part of me. That's how much he loves her. <laughs> Prolong her light. His throat ached. And so he, he continues to call upon these incantations, these different incantations, right? But as the chapter finishes, he screams. Uh, or, or he screamed. And the reason why he screamed fundamentally is because he saw the light that danced, the gentleness that she carried with her. Her love that she only showed for him flickered, showed for him flickered. He felt her spirit, felt her pain leave, until there was nothing but her, 
and yet it was not her any longer. By the way, she does transform, uh, but I am shortening a little bit. So being the richest man of the 21st century, Im yearns to fill the empty void, to gain the family he lost centuries before. Im gets his wish when a friend develops a serum to make women who cannot have children conceive. Im worried about harming a woman with his curse, volunteers to be a test subject to use the serum on himself so he, immortal, can carry a child to term. Because this woman fundamentally could not carry his child. She died. She lost what she was. Because you see in here, you can see he needed her. She looked at him tearfully, leaving a trail of inky liquid on her cheeks. He felt her writhe, her body contorting, as if she was trying to escape her flesh. No, he croaked. And of course, her hands in his began to darken, began to darken. The tips of her fingers turned onyx as black veins sprouted, cursing, climbing her shoulders, neck and chest. He was losing, he was losing her. He closed his eyes and spoke, reciting every spell, every incantation. Right. So he loses her. She can't bear a child for him. So this is the premise. He will fundamentally have to have his own child, child, which is insane. But it is true. And he does manage to establish the premise in the first prologue. Yes. And here's a second thing that is very important for, you know, establishing a plot, which is the promise. And the promise is done fundamentally. Once you establish the premise, the promise will be related to it. Fundamentally being, did you see, for example, that particular fight with the, between these epic characters we saw in the in the beginning of the prologue, the fundamental reality becomes now that we cut to chapter one, the promise basically is that this little boy, this irrelevant boy, will become as epic as those characters. Right. And so here he opened his eyes, pupils constricted as he took in his, the first breaths of air. Short, shaky gasps that filled the silence as he tried to focus on getting his breath under control, and so on and so forth. Huff, huff. His heartbeat gradually resumed to his steady cycle, even as he closed his eyes. Good morning, Mr. M. Uh, Master M. Music played quietly. M's smile was small after reading the article. Okay. M's eyes softened as he saw a couple, um, as he saw a picture of a couple. The man had his arms wrapped around his wife as the article read that the young couple was celebrating their second anniversary. The story continued going on that they were expecting their first child in a comical but traditional idiom. The wife had surprised the husband by putting cinnamon buns in the oven. It was then revealed that the couple were just expecting one but two buns, twins. He cannot fundamentally have, he, his smile, you know, shortens, right? Uh, his smile was small after reading the article because he himself can't have that. So the promise is, as the story progresses, he's going to have that. Yes. There is another premise. The premise, the second premise is, which means the story is a little bit complicated, but the second premise is basically that he was alone for centuries, immortal. He has walked the same path, carrying the last of a dying craft that modern chemists would go on their knees for the answer to everlasting knowledge and life. So the second premise in this story is that he will bring forbidden magical knowledge, ancient magical knowledge, to the modern world. And that, of course, is established in the first, in, in, you know, in, in, in the first uh, chapter here. Uh, and so I have to say this story is fundamentally very good, okay, on a developmental level. But here's where the problems come in, because all good things must come to an end. And I said, you know, if you want to write a good plot, establish the premise, establish the promise very early on. And here's the second reality. Follow through. Your, uh, you as a writer will be judged fundamentally on the quality of your delivery and the quality of your execution on what you promised the readers and what you, what the premises you have established specifically for the premise, you will be questioned and judged on how well do you explore. Do you explore that concept, that interesting, unique concept for your story, right? 
exactly so fundamentally you have to deliver the promise and explore the premise so deliver the promise explore the premise yeah so p r e m i s e p r o m i s e promise premise anyhow it all goes downhill however because the prose the prose needs a lot of improvement i mean the line editing here is really atrocious at best okay the despite the developmental the story being fundamentally good i don't think the prose honestly is good it could use significant improvement yes and you can see that in the first you know uh, uh the first few paragraphs right exactly so for example she let out a cry her lips once soft and warm transformed into a bruised purple here there is a tiny grammatical mistake here tiny cuts up into on her flesh revealing silvers of crimson then here is a mistake he clutched her body close to him almost forcing her to fuse into him so he could stay with him so she could stay with him to hold her to this earth forever this is a sentence on its own however it's it made a clause so this comma doesn't make much sense uh, this is a small mistake it's okay but this one is a is a is a problem that repeats multiple times in the in the in, the, in this uh sample where the prose is really not good yes it needs a lot of improvement also there's no need to really use uh capital letters and an exclamation mark okay so what have i done to deserve this exclamation mark exclamation mark he howled okay to howl i don't think when you howl you speak softly I don't think you speak softly when you howl. When you howl, you don't speak softly. You really put in the fire, right? So he bellowed, right? He bellowed. She has done nothing. Exclamation mark. He bellowed. So why? Why are you using? Why are you using capital letters? And why are you using an exclamation mark? If you, if you showed the reader that he bellowed. I don't think he went on to his room, grabbed a cup of, you know, milk and started drinking and, you know, after that dropped onto his bed and then said, she's done nothing. No, he's screaming off the top of his lungs that she has done nothing. So the prose needs improvement. Get rid of these exclamation marks. There is no need for you to use um, these capital letters. It's not necessary. And also the prose has a fundamental issue where sentences that are not supposed to be together are strung together they are latched together these two sentences this one right here number one then number two this one are separate sentences that repeats multiple times yeah and then finally the other problem is the prose the prose just doesn't have subtext the prose is 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 bland it is it is really bad okay now the story is interesting as i told you it's a rather fantastical unique story i have never seen a blurb like this you know you will be lying if you told me you saw a blurb like this im worried about harming a woman with his curse volunteers to be a test subject it's him right him im is him he will have to have his child it's absurd man it's it's a fantastic story i like it so this you know it is a unique story but the prose is not good for example omi question mark he called yes master what time is it it's 12:14 would you like lunch to be prepared no i that won't be necessary but can you please draw a shower i wish to get clean after working with sulfur yes master <sighs> have the lab cleared have the lab cleaned as well he asked make sure that the air is clean for the next time i return blah 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 mm -hmm. hello dr lexton it's just bad the, the prose is very bad so this was another story i really found it very interesting i have to congratulate jay baker okay congratulations okay <laughs> fantastic work you have done excellent and i gotta say jay baker has been has done a phenomenal job establishing everything he needed to establish relatively early and very well anyhow i hope you enjoyed this and took something from it let me know down in the comments below if you found it useful have a nice day bye <laughs>